crochet one single crochet two single crochets or depending on if you're used to US or UK to everyone um, today we're going to be looking at how to read a pattern again so if you saw the previous video we talked through a few of the things that you'll find on a pattern um, and a few different ways that they'll be written I was going to do this with an Aldi pattern but as usual the one that I got out that was a simple one had some errors in it so I'm going to do it today with my own pattern and this is the how to make your own mini rainbow key ring so the pattern is available to download but I'll pop a link to that um, in Ravelry. If you don't have the colours that you want or you want to buy it as a kit, you can do that as well and I'll pop a link to that in the description box as well. Because in the kit you would get a printed pattern, you can add on a crochet hook if you don't have one. You'll need either a 3mm or a 3.5mm um, if you're using the DK uh, double knit. You'll also get enough yarn in the kit to make two mini rainbows. You'll get two metal key rings, a um, little gift box to put them in in case you're gifting, um, and a little button to sew on, should you want to put on a button that says it's been handmade with love. Um, so starting off, like we mentioned, you'll need to know first of all whether you're using UK or US terms. Um, I do usually put it on the top, but on the Etsy listing it, it does actually say. So you'll usually find the information in crochet terms. Um, so I've got SC, which is a single crochet, and then in brackets, I've just popped that that's a UK double crochet. Just so that you know which stitch it is that you're doing. Obviously, if you see single crochet on any pattern, you know that you're using American terms because the UK doesn't have a single crochet. It's a double. So what you'll need, you'll need five colours. Um, any colours you want, you can either use bright rainbows or you can go for something more pastel -y. This is actually James C. Brett's 100% uh, cotton. Um, there's loads of cottons and I do find they make really nice key rings because they're not stretchy or saggy and they're really easy to machine wash should you get them dirty as well. Um, but it can be a bit more expensive, which is why I do the kits so that you get just what you need and it's a lot cheaper than having to buy five balls of, of cotton in whatever it is that you're choosing it does also mention on the pattern that you can use this pattern for any yarn so it doesn't have to be cotton and it doesn't even have to be double knit if you want to move up to an aran just move your your hook size up maybe to a, a four mil four and a half mil uh, if you want to use chunk it again I go up to a five or a six and if you want to go down to a four ply then just go down to maybe a two and a half and um, so again apply this to anything so your terms again, SC single crochet, SL is a slip stitch and CH is a chain. You'll also get on any pattern usually notes. These can be really long, but they usually always have your important information in them, such as whether or not a chain one at the beginning of a round counts as a stitch or doesn't count as a stitch, um, how they want you to change your colour, or if there's any special stitches in it, for example, like a puff stitch, it will usually describe how that is done. But you can usually find them on YouTube. Not, not all patterns are created equal. Some are better than others. So in this particular pattern, uh, the notes are at the end of each round, slip stitch to join, and then you can chain one and pull the yarn through to secure it. So you don't have to change colours as you're working. You totally can if you prefer. You don't need to weave in your ends, which is a nice note to see. Carry the loose, carry um, through the loose end on the next couple of stitches if you like to secure them, and leave them loose provides a small amount of padding for the inside. So it just gives you um, a little bit of a thicker rainbow, a bit squishy. You can attach the next colour anywhere on the previous round, so it doesn't matter whether you go in the same stitch or not, which sometimes can help get rid of that hexagon shape. Um, but I will do another quick video on how to make a perfect circle so that you don't end up with a hexagon. Um, you'll also usually get any notes about whether or not you can sell what you make from them. All of my patterns, anything that you make from any of the patterns that I've written, you're welcome to make them and sell anything. Um, all that most designers ask for is you just credit them as the pattern writer, as a designer. But you will find there are some um, that are strictly for personal use only. I haven't used any of those myself, but I do know that they're out there. And then places that you can find more patterns. 
so let's start. We'll start with the beginning of the pattern. Now this says it's round one, so you know that you're working around and not to and fro, like in a row. It'll also tell you which colour to start with, but if you're not using the kit, then you'll start with whatever colour you want at the bottom of your rainbow. So round one, lilac, create a magic circle and then add six SC, which we know are single crochet um, or UK doubles into the ring. There we go. And then you also get in brackets a number. This is how many stitches you should have at the end of that round, which is really helpful for you to be able to go back and count. You'll then slip stitch, chain and pull through to secure. OK, so let's start with that magic circle. If you struggle with this, I have got another video um, that shows three different ways you can do the magic circle. I'm going to do mine this way. So if you're still struggling with the magic circle, definitely check out that video. It's in the beginners videos playlist. So now I want to do six single crochets into the ring. So you go into the middle, pull up and go through. Make sure this first chain isn't really tight or you won't be able to work back into it. And if you do really struggle with the magic circle and you can't do it, then chain three, uh, join and work into that circle that you create. So six of these, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Got plenty left over. I always make sure there's more yarn than you need in the kits. Just in case you get in a tangle and have to snip any, at least you've got plenty spare. So I'll pull your loose thread tight and that will close your magic circle up. It doesn't have to be closed all the way because you will be folding this in half. So that's your last stitch. If you're not sure which it is, especially if you've chained at the beginning, we know we need six, so count back, not including what is on your hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Into the first one. Through both loops. Pull. And pull through again. And that's your slip stitch. Okay. So all you'll do now is chain, but carry on pulling. And that will now secure that colour. So you've now got six stitches and that is secured. You can snip that down and make it shorter if you want to as well. So we're going to go onto the next line of our pattern now, which is round two. This time with blue. And we're going to do two single crochet in each stitch from the previous round, which will give you a total of 12. Slip stitch, chain and pull through to secure. So we'll get the blue. So obviously if you bought the kit online, you will get two lots of these yarns. Okay. So as well, if you remember, it did say you can join this anywhere. I'm just going to stick with where I finished off. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure you're not going into the, the chain from the beginning. That's your slip stitch you've created. So I always find it easier just to go into the next available one. Like that. Pull your colour through. And you can attach this any way you want. Easiest way is just to pull your colour all the way through. Tie a knot. And that is now secured on. I would also say make sure that you're working around the circle in the same direction all the time. Otherwise, you'll have some rows that are back to front and some rows that are forwards. OK, so back in where we've just attached the colour. So if this is the way you're choosing to add on, you might just want to chain one so you get in the right place. Or you can just go straight ahead with your single crochets. I'll show you a different way to um, join your colour on the next row. So if you've chosen to just add a knot, then just chain one and it'll get you in the right place. But still do your two single crochets. So one, two. So makes it really clear on that one. 
to SC. You might also see on some patterns, it'll just say increase in each stitch. That's the same thing, just putting two stitches into the same stitch is increasing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, oops, and twelve. Now don't worry if it looks like you've got a really big gap, that's just your slip stitch from the previous round and that's going to close up anyway. So I'll go into the first stitch, make sure you go into the single crochet and not into the chain that you created. So we're gonna go back into that one, slip stitch. So you're just pulling it straight through, pull it all the way through. Oh, sorry, I didn't chain one, did I? Not that it, it really matters, but the chain one does just secure it a little bit better. I'll just undo that. Show you properly. There we go, <laughs> slip stitch. And chain one and pull all the way through. Okay. So, round three, green. So this is a bit where people then start to get confused with the pattern. So we've got one, sorry, one single crochet, two single crochets in the next, and we've got these asterisks. So that's a repeat from that asterisk to that asterisk all the way around. So it's sort of saying this is your repeat. So you're going to do one single crochet, two single crochet in the next. One, two, one, two, all the way around. Repeat that all the way around and that will give you a total of 18. Whenever you're creating a circle, um, you will find that you'll increase by whatever you started with. So you're 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. And then again, slip stitch chain and pull through to secure. So we'll go back into a stitch. Again, choose any stitch on the circle, it doesn't matter. Get your third colour ready. Okie doke. And then the other way you can attach your colour, if you don't want to tie a knot in it, is you can put your hook through the stitch, wrap your yarn over, pull through, and instead of pulling all the way through and tying, get hold of your long thread like you're going to be working with and just chain straight away. And that means then you don't have a knot. So now we're going to do one and then two in the next. So one and then two in the next. So that's now two, three, and we're repeating that. So one and two. Now each time I'm holding the colour from the previous row on top of my work and the um, short end of the new colour and going through the stitch, having those on top. And single crocheting so it traps it underneath. Once you've done that a few times, you can just let go of it. So I'll keep doing that all the way around. One and then two. One and then two. If this is too fast for you, don't worry. Just pause the video and catch up when you're ready. If you lose track, you can usually see what you've just done. So you'll get two in that one. One, two, one. And you can see the stitches so it's easy to see where you've been up to so you can either go around counting one two one two in your head or you can just keep counting until you get up to 18 so double check one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen so we've got two left which will be in this one two one two okay and then we're going to be on to round four yellow 
So another way you can change colour, might as well show you again, is keeping the green on, going through into the next stitch. Let's just get the yellow ready actually. Okay, so similar to how you did, how I showed you with the green, hold it like and red it. Put the yellow over. I'm going to slip stitch with your yellow like that. Keep your short end of your green because if you let go of that, it, it could unravel. And now that's your first stitch, and you're going to go straight into single crocheting in there. Okay, so straight in. Or, like I say, if you want, if you want to pull it tighter, just chain one. And we're going to go straight in again. So now you've got no knots and you've changed colour that way. So round four, yellow. Got the asterisks again. And now we've got one SC, one SC, two SC inside the asterisks. So that's showing you what your repeat will be. So you're going to do one in one stitch, one in the next stitch, and then two in the next stitch all the way around. So now you're going to do one, one, two, one, one, two. So this again is, is the part that confuses most people when learning to, to read a pattern. So I've done one. I need to do another one and then in the next stitch I'm going to do two. So that is a total of four. Now if you weren't changing colour on every round this is where stitch markers start to come in really really helpful. You would pop a stitch marker in there and you would just keep going so you wouldn't slip stitch you would just keep going all the way around for example if you were just doing something in the same colour. So rather than having to keep counting, because obviously as your circle gets bigger, your numbers get higher, it's easy to get distracted, especially if somebody interrupts you and speaks to you, something catches your eye on the telly, it's usually my problem. And then you lose count of where you are. So there we are, going all the way around, one, one, two. And I've trapped those stitches for a few stitches. I actually dropped the yellow a little bit early, but that doesn't matter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we're going to do eleven, twelve in the same stitch, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24 in the same stitch. And that's what we've got in the brackets, so we know that's correct. The other thing you'll um, notice as well is however you s your first repeat finished, that's how you should always finish the row. So we've done one, one, two. So we know we're going to end with two in the same stitch. If you don't end with two in the same stitch, you've gone wrong somewhere. Count your stitches. Okay, so now we're on the last row, which is the pink. So I'm going to slip stitch, chain one and pull through to secure. I'm going to go back to doing it that way. So you can join your colours on however you want. It really doesn't matter how you want to join the colours. I do tend to, although in the pattern you can join on wherever you want, I tend to keep mine in the same place. And that's where I'll then fold it in half. So last colour ready. That's so where we'll start turning it into a rainbow. So we're now on round five of the pattern, in case you're crocheting along with your own printed version. So round five, pink, or whatever your outside colour is. Again, asterisk, so you know when you see the first one, keep a look out for the second one, and that'll tell you your repeat. One, 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 two. So every time you increase, it gets one further apart. So it, it was in every, then it was one, and then two, one, one, two, and now it's one, 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 two. If you're making a circle, you continue that pattern by putting your increase one stitch further along every round, and you can make a circle as big as you want it doing that. Repeat from that asterisk to that asterisk, which is there to there, all the way around, giving a total in the brackets of 30. Slip, 
chain and pull through to secure. But you fold your circle in half and put all your yarn ends inside. Um, on this though, you wouldn't actually cut your yarn, you would just chain. Um, so I might just edit that actually. So it's a bit clearer. This is my um, original pattern that I wrote. That's why it's on an old black and white <laughs> piece of paper. Um, so this time we're going to go around and we want 30. Uh, one, two, three. That's why I paused as I was reading it. Two in the next. So we're getting three singles and then a, a two in the same. Yeah, paused as I read it, realising that that's not actually how the new pattern is written. Um, it's a lot clearer because you don't pull through on the very last one because you, you're actually going to continue working with the pink. Double, one, two, three. So this is a double. Just try and get around as quickly as I can in case you're following along and you're catching up or if you want to pause and catch up. There we go. One, two, three. And two and then just double check when you get to the end that you've got 30 it's not hugely critical on this because it is just a key ring so if you've ended up adding a stitch or, or whatever it's your first time following a pattern don't worry too much one, two, three. Oh, it should be two in one it's always worth just checking so there's two there one two three two in there one two, three, so I want two in the next, and we should finish on a two, one, two, three, two in the next, oops, sorry, not the camera, and you should have quite a lot of this left at the end if you've bought the kit, slip stitch, Chain one, but don't pull through. Ignore that on this one. It's correct on the downloadable version. Fold your circle in half. So you want to fold it where the hook is and tuck all your yarn. Now you can either snip these or you can tuck them all in. It really doesn't matter. It depends how, um, how padded you want it to be. I think I will just snip those actually. Just uh, give those a little snip because they're quite long. I do have some new ones of these, but there we are. Not ideal when you've not got sharp snips. So pop all your ends inside, fold in half, and then continuing with the pink, uh, sorry, continue with the pink yarn, slip stitch through the next eight si stitches on both sides of the semicircle. There's a little picture there to show you. So what you're going to do is go into stitch on this side and then go into the same stitch on the other side and slip stitch. You want to do that eight times. So make sure, otherwise you'll have a wonky semicircle, that you're going through and not missing any on the other side. Slip stitch again, that's two. So into that one. And into the next one. So you're doing both sides there. Three. Four. Five. Oops, missed one. Six. Seven. Eight should leave us about seven or eight on that side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. I might have actually missed one at the beginning. And chain ten and slip stitch back into the stitch at the base of the chain. So one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and go back into the base. So the same one that you started your chain in. And you go back into that one through both sides of your circle and slip stitch and then continue so continue to single crow uh, sorry to slip stitch that should be through both sides to complete the semicircle so one two three all the way down to the end and then it says when you reach the end chain one and pull the yarn all the way through to secure that last stitch okay so just into that very last one so slip stitched but to secure it chain one pull the yarn all the way through to secure it and you can either, pulled a bit of the purple stuffing through there, give it a bit of a squash. Your stuffing will help make that stay in the rainbow shape. So you can either weave in this end with your, um, with your needle. I'm just going to cheat a bit and I'm going to snip it off. And I'm going to weave it into the inside using my hook. So it'll just hide that end poke it through there, put that on and then you can pull it through, maybe just go back again there we are and you could if you wanted to just leave it on the inside so poke that through there and then if you give it a squash this works really well with ami uh, amigurumi or however it's pronounced if you're making people squash it tight and then when you give it a little wiggle the end will disappear off inside and you can add your little metal loop you can do with that at the time if you want whilst you're chaining the other variation to this is rather than slip stitching to join the two sides together um, originally had it as single crocheting through both sides it just gives that pink um, it makes it a little bit thicker but I preferred the look of the slip stitch so there you go really quick make um, in under half an hour really nice little extra gifts or you could make them slightly bigger as Christmas tree decorations or even bigger still you could use them for wall hangings or popping in your window. Um, all I would say then is if you wanted to go even bigger um, than this is you could add two rounds um, of each colour. So it would just mean after round five you would carry on increasing and you would change your colour every two rows. Um, so there's, there's loads of different ways you can do it. I think there is actually a free written pattern for that on the Ravelry um, store for downloading as well. So good luck. I hope that helps explain one way of reading a pattern. Um, I'll hopefully do some more as well. Got plenty of patterns to go at. Um, and I know when I started, I didn't read a pattern for about two years. Um, it was all tutorials or nothing for me. So good luck. Let me know in the comments if that was helpful or if there's anything else that you'd like to see. I'm quite happy to make more videos for what people want. Um, and uh, see you again soon.